This is Nationwide and the network service of the NTA. We are live in Abuja. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Thanks for joining us. Bilateral relations is our starting point today. As Nigeria's first lady, Aisha Buhari has promised to continue to give maximum support to her Burundian counterpart, Angeline Ndai Sheme, with regards to the promotion of health and nutrition of women and children in the Republic. The First Lady said this while addressing a high-level forum of women leaders in Africa taking place in Bujumbura, Burundi. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir completes the report. As the conference of the high-level African women progresses, participants comprising the first and the president African first ladies as well as various human groups in Burundi and across the continent have engaged in series of discussions to cross fertilize ideas towards enhancing the general well-being of women and children under the support of government of the Republic of Burundi headed by President Everest Ndai Shimi and other development partners. Given the theme of the conference, Health and Nutrition of Women and Children, the First Lady of Nigeria commended the resilience of the First Lady of Burundi for her giant strides towards fighting malnutrition, especially in children under the age of five. We engage them to be committed by championing the cost of maternal, newborn, child, adolescent health plus nutrition in their respective states. We have given up books of medications, antenatal kits, free medical missions, skill acquisition programs to mention a few. This is why I'm happy to be here in Burundi in person to support and encourage my dear sister also my vice president of me president and to share ideas on how we can continue to impact on the lives of our people through meaningful collaborations and networking we can achieve the goal of eradicating malnutrition in our society so, the First Lady and the President of the Africa First Lady's Trade Mission used the occasion to donate made in Nigeria nutritional products to support the malnourished children in Burundi. The First Lady of Burundi, who acknowledged the contribution of Mrs. Buhari, promised to remain steadfast in her advocacy towards improving maternal health not only in Burundi but across the continent. In Bujumbura, Burundi, Ali Wukabiru, NTA News. And back home, female miners are making a case for equal rights in the mining industry. President Women in Mining, Janet Adeyemi, presented a women's position at a two-day policy dialogue on mainstreaming gender in the solid minerals sector in Abuja, a research document compiled after inputs from stakeholders held in Eboin, Edo, Oshun, Plateau, and Taraba State was also presented. But some of them believe, ah, mining is for men. Mining is for the powerful. To break that stereotyping, we quickly moved in, you know, to start educating them. We have started opening the books to look at it. We still don't have access to funding. We still don't have access to titles. Because why? Not because we are denied directly, but there's indirect denial. How, is, how are there indirect denial? Indirect denial is that I don't have money of my own. I don't have property of my own. So I cannot assess those things you are talking of. Sometimes women by their own self discriminate themselves. 
but because they look at issues and feel that it is purely for men. No, it is available for all to pick up. The Federal Executive Council has approved of the value addition of the downset, uh, downstream sector of the mining industry. It opens the door for cottage industries to be established. Women in Mining, in partnership with the Ford Foundation and the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, is also engaging the girl child in secondary schools and tertiary institutions on modern knowledge in the mining sector. To security now, two retired Inspectors General of Police and the current Inspector General of Police, Usman al Kalibaba, were among the 447 Nigerians bestowed with national honors. IGP Al-Kali Baba says he will do more in the fight against all forms of crimes and the protection of lives and property to justify the honor. Over now to Francis Fong. About 198 projects executed by the police under Usman Al-Kali Baba's leadership, including the remodeling of the recently unveiled divisional police stations, barracks, training and retraining, promotion and the enhanced welfare package Commander for police the personnel. These and many other achievements and IGP Usman Al Kalibaba, the CFR Award. We recommended a lot of promotions which has never taken place. At a go, we had 40 deputy commissioners of police promoted to commissioners. Uh, we as management will try to do our best to see that decisions we take here are based on merit, are based on productivity, are based on those we feel that can deliver. IGP Al Kali Baba dedicates the award to officers and men of the force, reminding them on the critical role of teamwork in achieving success. The IGP assures that the condition of service will continue to improve under his leadership. Francis is from NTA News. And on standby in our Lagos Network Center with more reports on Nationwide is Hingino. Hello, Hingino. It's over to you. Thank you, Hawa. Stakeholders have continued to review policies to address insecurity in schools across the country as it is militating against the development of education. Beyond reporting issues relating to insecurity in schools, media practitioners are determined to promote values of quality education through advocacy. Lynn Leneke reports. Security situation in the country, according to the Federal Ministry of Education, has had a domino effect on the literacy level of Nigerians, as insurgency also destroyed 497 classrooms, leaving 2.8 million school learners in need of education in emergency support. Between 2012 and 2016, more than 600 teachers were reportedly killed in attacks, with more than 19,000 displaced. While this situation continues to take its toll with unimaginable effect on the growth of the education sector, insecurity has also aggravated the already challenging out-of-school menace plaguing Nigeria. It is time for us to work together as a team. We want to be that channel for that change. We want to be that channel for that collaboration. These key players are discussing how to improve efforts in ensuring safety in schools. Every student, they must be in the National Health Infection, um, Insurance Scheme, such that when they're not in school, they also can, they're still covered. We put out our men to all the public schools and to take charge of it so that they can get sensitive information. At the government level, series of initiatives have been adopted to ensure the protection within and around schools. The National Council of Education in August 2021 approved the national policy of safety and violence-free schools in Nigeria and its implementation guidelines as reference documents for all education stakeholders. The safety goes beyond just the physical safety. What are we doing about drugs, 
what are we doing about bullying, cyber bullying and fiscal bullying? Stakeholders are, however, suggesting more deliberate efforts in tackling the insecurity situation in schools through partnership, advocacy, and adequate policy implementation. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. The Custom Strike Force Team A is warning importers to embrace genuine and sincere declaration as mechanisms have been mapped out to arrest recalcitrant traders who might want to take advantage of the embermans to make profit through smuggling. The coordinator of the team, Mohamed San Yusuf, gave the warning in Lagos while displaying seizures, which include a pump action rifle, pistol, and live cartridges. Michael Olalea reports. <laughs> it is the time of the year characterized with increase in smuggling activities and the customs much aware of this is increasing regular patrol and unscheduled checks this is a product of one of its unplanned surveillance in which the suspect grew apprehensive after having the feeling of being trailed by officers of the custom strike force team a and on meeting a traffic brick wall at Alaba area of Lagos, the suspect hurriedly left the vehicle and escaped. One pump action rifle, one locally made pistol, and 14 cartridges were seen in the car. We find uniforms of yes, this uh, road transport or uh, whatever employment officers we can see. This will be handed to our custom, uh, custom police unit and investigation will definitely unravel who the people are because we have their ID card. Apart from the vehicle which was impounded, five others were seized by the customs for various offenses, especially for being used as means of conveyance for contrabands and import prohibitions. But this 2014 edition of Maserati car, confiscated along the borderline in Idiruko, has continued to raise more questions than answers. The worry of the in custom strike force team A is why would someone invade duty for such an expensive vehicle? This 20 foot container is a clear case of concealment in which the importer covered up 1,670 cartons of tomato paste with 500 cartons of sanding. Out of the 1,500 bags of foreign rice seized within the period under review, 50 bags were also concealed in the midst of bags of cement. During this period, the Strike Force Team A seized goods with duty paid value of 390 million naira, while raising revenue from demand notices by more than 748 million naira. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Zinred is waiting with more reports on Nationwide from Just. But before that, do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. This is Dear Nationwide and welcome to Joss. The Nigerian army is seeking implementable strategies to reinstill the zeal and fighting spirit of its personnel in combat. The Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya gave the indication in a message during a seminar for army personnel at the 3 Division of the Nigerian Army in Jos. The report. The seminar, which is at the instance of the Department of Army Transformation and Innovation Army Headquarters, is aimed at enhancing the fighting spirit of soldiers and officers of the Nigerian Army, with the theme, Intensifying Warrior Ethos and Regimentation in the Nigerian Army. The Chief of Army Staff says this will help build a Nigerian Army of exceptional repute. The Paper presentation centered on regimentation as a critical enabler for combat efficiency in the Nigerian Army and enhancing warrior ethos in the Nigerian Army for improved combat efficiency, with the resource persons urging personnel to always seek the best of results in their operations. And to turn off the challenges 
by leaving out of the right directive and order. That was friendly policy doctrine. The three day seminar has officers and commanders of units and formations across the three divisions attending. The National Population Commission says it remains committed to the conduct of a credible and acceptable census that is transformational and meets international standard. Federal Commissioner representing Plata State in the National Population Commission, Cecilia Dapwet, said this in just at a stakeholders' summit for the 2022 Population and Housing Census. Ijama Examiner has the details. The recently concluded 2022 trial census in Plateau State and the forthcoming 2023 population and housing census is a trust of the stakeholder summit in Jos, convened by the Plateau State Office of the National Population Commission. Simon Bakola, along the Plateau State Governor, who was represented by the Commissioner for Special Duties, Jerry Well, notes that the summit will promote robust and informed state-level conversation on the processes for the 2023 census. We must therefore resolve to, to divorce politics from census and consider it as a purely statistical exercise that will provide veritable tools for planning. Federal Commissioner representing Plateau State explains that the head count seeks to provide data for policy making, planning and administration to enhance the welfare of the people. As part of efforts to deliver a credible and reliable census, the Commission is committed to ensuring that the results of the census are acceptable to Nigerians. The size of a nation or population is very critical to the distribution of resources. I think it's going to be a huge success. With the kind of stakeholders engagement we've seen, we do as much as possible to engage people to understand the significance of the national census. Goodwill messages came from Bongom Jos, Uja of Anaguta, National Orientation Agency, National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Jamatu Nasri Islam, and Christian Association of Nigeria. In Jos, Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. That's our contribution to Nationwide. It's back to Hawa in Abuja. Very well, Zenrit. Thank you. And here in Abuja, the Commissioner of Police, FCT, Babaji Sunday says the new policing strategy is anchored on deliberate involvement of people and the communities to strengthen and bring security closer to them. The police commissioner gave the indication when he led a joint security tax team on Tor of Yagba, a boundary community between Abaji and Niger State in continuation of his boundary patrol of the Federal Capital Territory. Onotu Yakubu completes the report. Yaba is about two kilometers journey from the council headquarters on Lokoja Abuja Highway, half a kilometer trek from Baro in Niger State, and as well bounding Kogi to the south and Kaduna to the north. An egalitarian community, Yaba has been an easy entry and exit access for dreaded bandits and kidnappers terrorizing FCT for years. This threat has been given the Esu Yaba, his council, and subjects so much cause to worry. For the reference to the above explanation, I wish to humble appeal to the city to please come to our head and the mark a stop and touch checking point at the above. There is nothing as good as living together, being your brothers and sisters to keep us safe. What I'm saying is we have received a lot of intelligence. And by the grace of God, with the technology we are having, we are going to start working on them. Under the leadership of uh, the city, still on this Yabag, we are not joking, and we are not going to joke. I'm going to assure you that uh, we have been equipped to conduct some operations there, but for security reasons, I will not let it out. The people observed that vigilantes in Yaba are doing much to support the police division. However, CP Babaji Sunday pledged immediate deployment of more manpower to strengthen presence with a patrol vehicle to aid visibility. From Yaba, Onotu Yakubo, NTA News.
And still on security, the Nigeria Customs Service, Ogun Area 1, says its intelligence gathering as well as community-based approach to curtail the activities of smugglers have yielded some positive results, especially in the area of securing the nation's borders and clamping down on smugglers. Customs Area Controller, Bamidili Makinde said these at Idiroko, Ogun State. Yemi Dalemo reports. On the outcome of the command's reinvigorated anti smuggling operations for the third quarter of the 2022 fiscal year, the Customs Area Controller Bamidili Makinde says effective intelligence reports on the movement of smugglers to the customs officers manning the border post no doubt has assisted the command in checking smuggling and subsequently increased trade facilitation as well as strengthened the nation's security. Activities and back upon by the command are driven by protesting for the economic development and security of the nation. The Jackson Service operatives, mindful of the rules of the government, will continue to carry out the engagement which is asked <laughs> He has been that the commands in the last three months have intercepted over 227 contraband goods such as foreign parboid rice, used tires, barrels of second-hand clothing materials, among others, with total duty paid value of over 341 million naira. The controller assured the public that the command will continue to enlighten residents of border communities, especially youth, on the negative implications of smuggling business on the nation's economy. In Abelkuta, Yemida Limo, NTN. To help now, regular eye checks and education could prevent the World Health Organization's estimated 2 billion vision impairment and blindness around the world. Uche Ugochiku reports that this is the essence of the World Side Day with Love Your Eyes, continuing as the theme from the 2021 campaign. 80% of what we perceive comes through our sense of sight and the eye. The tool is often neglected by many for reasons like fund and accessibility. The likes of 38-year-old Solomon Risk joining the estimated 0.78% of Nigeria's population with visual impairment and blindness due to lack of checks. I never ever in my life check my eye for anything. However, 18-year-old Rejoice has battled refractive errors, but for her love for her eyes, she is enjoying her photography. Checking of my eyes really helped me the way I view things before. It's not like the way I view now. Vision impairment and blindness affect people of all ages that's prevalent among persons over 40 years. That is why the 74th World Health Assembly adopted a resolution to assist member states and their partners in their efforts to reduce the burden of eye conditions. Refractive error is high, glaucoma is high, cataract is also there, but thank God for, you know, the... Um, people are becoming more aware that when they have cataract, it can actually be resolved by surgery and it doesn't really take much. Again, more needs to be done in the rural areas, you know, because a lot of them infect their eyes because of they don't have a good um, um, system of cleaning themselves up after using the toilet. World Sight Day is observed annually on the second Thursday of October. And a bit of politics as campaigns continue to blossom across party lines ahead of the forthcoming general elections. The Coalition for Good Governance for Tinubu and Shatima is mobilizing votes for the victory of the All Progressives Congress. Abubakar Akwanga reports. It has been a few weeks after the lift of ban on campaigns by the nation's electoral body and the ambience is already paying off. Now, the Coalition for Good Governance is mobilizing its support groups across the 36 states of the Federation for the actualization of 80% votes target for Tinubu and Shatima. These campaigns we shall pursue relentlessly and tirelessly until the last day of campaigns before the presidential election. The Coalition says Tinubu and Shatima have demonstrated excellent leadership qualities that can make Nigeria function better. This program was built to be carried out in all the states, local government areas, hills and valleys, creeks and water sites, and from door to door. 
the political support group is set to unveil a workable document tagged the Rebirth Manifesto for the socio-economic transformation of the country through Tinubu and Shatima joint ticket. <laughs> In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. And the need for political gladiators to be proactive in building a healthier political system for the promotion of good governance in Nigeria has been emphasized. This was the submission at the International Valedictory Conference organized in honor of the outgoing governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kayo D. Fayemi in Adoekiti. Kola Adebubui completes the report. The two-day event was to showcase the critical areas Dr. Kayo D. Fayemi touched, especially in healthcare, education, infrastructure development, women's empowerment and community development, which has prepared Ekiti State to the top echelon of the development matrix at subnational level. Speakers, including Governor of Kebi State, Abubakar Bagudu, and his Bono State counterpart, Professor Babanga Nazulum, observed that political gladiators must be proactive and adhere with the responsibilities that accompanied leadership, which Dr. Fayemi has always projected at various capacities. The conference shows that the value of leadership goes beyond the office of leadership itself. But we share the importance of connecting with the ordinary person. The panel session also highlighted practical measures that could help in achieving a better nation and how the younger generations must be given opportunities to demonstrate their capacities, integrity and commitment towards nation building. I had the privilege of standing on the shoulders of giants and that is why I always try within my own power to give opportunities to young people. Cultural display by the State Performing Arts climaxed the event. In and we are not done with the southwest as Adebola is on standby with more reports from that zone. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Hawa. Thank you for joining us in Ibadan. The wife of your your state governor, Tamuna Minini. Mark Indi has inaugurated boroughs for the people of Southeast local government area of the state. Rufia Animashan Badmos reports that the governor's wife said this is in fulfillment of the state's promise to residents of the city. Inaugurating the project, the wife of the governor, Mrs. Tamuno Binini Makinde, said this is the fallout of the campaign promising of the present administration to make clean water available for dwellers in the 33 local government in your state. The last quarter of the year, it always dry. So most times we have problem with the ground. The ground dries up and water um, becomes a bigger problem towards the last two quarters of the year. So... We are saying that we took water we're giving to them, we're telling them, okay, um, don't struggle, um, have life easy, and enjoy life. Commissioner for Public Works, Professor Daoud Songudun, joined President of Udi in Makbo to take charge of the project and ensure its sustainability. <laughs> Highlights at the occasion included donation of a vehicle to Tamuna Minimu Makinde Olufunke Sin. To further enhance accurate data towards eradicating poverty in Nigeria, some enumerators that will carry out the Nigeria Labor Force Survey have been deployed and currently undergoing training. Ifelu Amoshile covered the event organized by the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics in Ibado, the Oyo State Capital. Numbering about 200, the enumerators who are members of staff of the National Bureau of Statistics were urged to be dedicated and be of professional conduct during the exercise. The training, which will last for seven days, is expected to intimate the enumerators on new strategies the NBS will be adopting in a bid to have a data that will be locally acceptable and in line with international best practices. I have to commend the training of enumerators for the enhanced 
National Labor Force Survey, which is one survey that gives us the indicator of unemployment in the country. To be able to disaggregate the data by state levels, by gender, by level of education, by location, either or now, we are going to give a questionnaire to the regulators to get the response, and the response from the, from the respondents. But now, everything has been put into copy, and into copy that we are going to use to collect the data. The new enumerators who will be engaged in the exercise for one year will be deployed to the 36 states of the Federation. In Ibadan, Ife Oluwa Moshili, NCA News. That's it from Ibadan. Nationwide continues with Fatima in Makodi after this break. <laughs> And a warm welcome to Makudi. The Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command Nigerian Air Force Makudi, Air Vice Marshal Precious Namdi, says he will continue to prioritize safety of lives and property of Bainwe people. He stated this during his visit to Governor Samalotum at the Government House Makudi. Charles Abba reports. The Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command. Nigerian Air Force Makudi, Air Vice Marshal Precious Nandi Amadi, who is on his seventh posting to Benway State, stated that the terrain is not new to him. He pointed out that he would prioritize supporting Benway State to fight insecurity to further enhance the relative peace in the state. I have one belief in me as a, as a military officer. No man should die unjustly. Nobody should be killed for no cause of his own. So we will do all we can to ensure that within our own confines, within our own limits, to protect lives and properties. The Air Officer Commanding a short cordial relationship with his host community, but appealed to the people to steer clear of encroachment into Nigerian Air Force land. So I appeal to the Secretary to help us get the CFO so that we can secure the base and the Peace Governor Samuel Otom congratulated the Air Officer Commanding for ascending to the position and expressed optimism that, being an operational officer with wealth of experience, he would effectively deploy his strategies and manpower to tame the tide of security challenges in the state. Without security for lives and property, there can be no meaningful progress anywhere in all aspects. You can't go to school. Your children can't go to school. You can't affect any development. I am aware of certain projects that were undertook, and today they cannot continue because of security challenges. The governor assured the AOC Tactical Air Command of facilitating issuance of certificate occupancy of its land. The government is ready to provide a CEO so that there will be a permanent solution on these matters. He appreciated the Nigerian Air Force for its contribution to the safety of lives and property of Benway people. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And to politics, as political campaigns kick off across the country, the Independent Electoral Commission, INEC in Benway State, has urged political parties to uphold the guidelines and provision of the Electoral Act to ensure a huge free general elections in 2023. The Administrative Secretary of the Commission, Shehu Abdu-Wahab, gave the charge during a stakeholders meeting at the state INEC office in Makudi. Moses Ode reports. The stakeholders meeting organized by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Benue State, is to sensitize the officials of various political parties, security agencies, traditional institutions, as well as the general public on the need to engage on issue-based campaign preparatory to the forthcoming general elections. The Administrative Secretary of the Commission in Benue State, Shehu Abduhab, assured the political players of the Commission's resolve to uphold free, fair and credible elections and appeal for cooperation from members of the public. The election will not be peaceful if the period of campaign is riotous. Indeed, for all the nine, experience has shown that most of the problems we experience on election day 
we are having over of problem during primaries as well as problem during campaign. Members of some of the political parties in the state assured of their resolve to cooperate with the INA guidelines as they equally promised to relay the message down to their party candidates and supporters. The Commissioner of Police, Wale Abbas, representatives of other security agencies and the National Orientation Agency, commended INEC for the initiative and assured their continuous synergy towards the smooth conduct of the 2023 general elections. If you decide this way, you don't have another place to go. So you must learn how to embrace this. If you know that you want to serve this country or this state, do we need a... Uh, we should kill ourselves before that. Talk to your people. They should avoid the issue of using drugs. It is better for us at this time, especially in this period, to understand that we need to do issue-based campaigns. The representative of the Tortive, His Royal Majesty James Ayase, noted that the country is going through turbulent times and appeal to all to strive to unite the country and shown inciting statements. I want to let my children know that it's God that sent leadership. In Makudi, Moses Udi, NTA News. And that's it from Makudi. Nationwide continues in Abuja with Hawa. Thank you, Fatima. The federal government says more than 500 people have died as a result of the ravaging flood in 31 states. Musa Aliu completes the report. Figures released by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development indicate that 1,411,000 people were affected by the recent flood disasters in 31 states. 146,744 hectares of farmlands were destroyed and 89,000 houses damaged. Weather and environmental watchers said the flood was as a result of rainfall and overflowing rivers following the release of water from Lag Dam. Cameroon opened their gate on the 13th of September. They have been spilling water and by my last communication with them, it will still continue maybe up to 15th, 16th of this month. Uh, we're going to see more floods. And now the rains is concentrating in the north central and the southern states. So there will be a combination of short duration high intensity rain with uh, riverine flooding. In the meantime, Nigeria is set to implement the World Meteorological Organization's recommendation on weather related disaster alert. The system, known as Hydro SOS, will enable all relevant agencies to streamline weather related information for dissemination to the public. Consequently, the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, Nigeria Hydrological Services, have joined forces with the UK Centre for Ecological and Hydrology in the implementation of the initiative. Nigeria could be one of the first countries, not just in Africa, but actually in the world, for implementing this new Hydro SOS system. And the World Meteorological Organization have the aim to implement this system in all member states around the world. Through this Hydro SOS, we are trying to make sure that NIMET and NISA work closer together so that whatever they take out there to the public is more comprehensive, is easy to understand and easy to implement. Experts are now brainstorming on how effective the SOS will impact on weather-related disaster mitigation in the country. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. And a report just in says member states of the Gulf of Guinea Commission have been tasked to urgently galvanize action against the danger and threat affecting maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea region. President Mohamed Buhari threw the challenge at a virtual summit of the heads of states and government of the Gulf of Guinea. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo is putting together that report and will be brought to you later. A coalition of civil society organizations has expressed concern over some foreign nationals engaged in the direct purchase of agricultural produce at the farm gate. At a meeting in Abuja, the convener of the coalition, Emmanuel Ongudiwe, observed that this action is against the federal government's directive of March 
2021-2022 that banned foreigners from engaging directly in the purchase and slaughter of donkeys. The economic platform that is capable of injecting 60 billion naira into the Nigerian economy by way of direct investment and is also capable of getting over 250,000 Nigerians direct and indirect employment. The economic potential of the sector can only be fully harnessed if the sector is well regulated to serve Nigeria's best interest. The group urged the Suleiman audu led committee to redouble efforts in enforcing the presidential directive and sanction any government official aiding foreigners to carry out this unpatriotic act. Knowledge and experiences acquired over the years have been described as relevant to the professional development of a working class individual. A consummate professional, engineer, public servant and the first Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Vincent Maduka, has put his career experiences that spanned several decades to print in the memoirs titled Real Life, My Years of Managing Public Television for Upcoming Workers to Draw Lessons From. <laughs> Professional colleagues and associates who were at the event emphasized the need for the media to sustain its place in the polity as a tool for public transformation by being balanced, objective, and truthful. It's all in a sense, in a wisdom to develop a concept that these people have become landmarks in NG. Um, I like to start off the slopes. That this leader lets me to walk on that background. Book chronicles history of public broadcasting in Africa from the Nigerian perspective. Three African digital technology innovation startups have made it to the finals of the Supernova Challenge Pitch Competition organized by the North Star Dubai at the 42nd Ditex Global in the United Arab Emirates. ICT correspondent Chidima Ndubisi reports that two of the three are Nigerian startups. The categories are Africa First, as well as Mobility and St Smart Cities Innovator. Meanwhile, Nigeria signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Microsoft Nigeria that will see 5 million citizens gain digital skills. And where best to seal the deal than at the largest tech exhibition in the world, Jitex Global Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Again, ICT correspondent Chidima Ndubisi completes the report. The tea is crushed, ice dotted, and the deal is sealed. Under this deal, categorized into 10 initiatives, 1 million job seekers will be trained on latest digital skills in high demand by organizations. 2 million talents will be engaged on revolutionizing business technologies. Microsoft Nigeria will employ 20,000. Others will be coached on data and artificial intelligence, coding, applications, and web development, while some number of youths will get expertise on Microsoft's cloud and technology. It is an agreement guaranteed to drive bottom line business value, accelerate technological innovations, and create more jobs. By this, Nigeria is set to be positioned in meeting the digital technological skills gap already predicted for 2030. From Dubai, Chip the Man BBC, NTA News. Micro, small, and medium enterprises in Nigeria are getting a lot more attention now with increased monitoring, nurturing, and coordination from a joint public private sector initiative. The initiative is a partnership comprising Smeden, the Commonwealth and other business membership organizations. Bosadel Ebel completes the report. 
Micro businesses form the majority of the 39.6 million MSMEs in Nigeria, accounting for over 95% of all MSMEs. As scalability have become an area of concern for economic growth in developing economies, growing and expanding the MSME sector of the economy is one key strategy to achieve economic growth and development. Here, the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, SMEDAN, is strategizing and partnering with the Commonwealth and other business member organizations to provide supportive and enabling environment for entrepreneurs in Nigeria that we further boost economic development. We discovered that about 39.6 million MSMEs in Nigeria. So small businesses are critical in whatever we're doing. And for us to support them, we need to consciously and deliberately increase these numbers to be able to achieve uh, our vision of creating more jobs for people. The Commonwealth says the focus of the partnership will be on e-commerce and digital trade, mostly capturing women-owned businesses. The farmers on the field, the small businesses on the field can take advantage of the opportunities of e-commerce to sell their products not only within Nigeria but hopefully outside of the nation. As stakeholders in Nigeria are accelerating economic diversification initiatives through MSMEs, this partnership seem likely to drive development and growth in the economy. In Abuja, Boss Sede Ebo continues. We now take you to our earlier story on President Buhari's charge to member states of the Gulf of Guinea on addressing insecurity in the region. The Gulf of Guinea Commission has, amongst other objectives, creating conditions of mutual confidence towards defending the common interests of member states as well as promoting peace and socio-economic development on the basis of dialogue, consensus, ties of friendship, solidarity and fraternity. This summit was convened by President Muhammadu Buhari as outgoing chairman of the Heads of State and Government of the Gulf of Guinea Member States to review progress made in their efforts to deal appropriately with maritime challenges in the region. Nigeria considers the effective functioning of the Gulf of Guinea Commission as strategic to the collective security interests in the Gulf region particularly in addressing issues such as piracy, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, protection of marine resources, as well as irregular migration to the region. The federal government, the president said, has championed several efforts towards fighting maritime insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea. Nigeria has continued to deploy significant resources those tackling piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. Through the Deep Blue Project in June 2021, the government of Nigeria unveiled 195 million United States dollars worth of boats, vehicles, and aircraft to spearhead the country's fight against piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. President Buhari, however, identified the COVID-19 pandemic and its attendant negative impact on the activities of the Gulf of Guinea Commission, as well as inadequate cash flow as major challenges that confronted efforts at fighting maritime insecurity in 2020 and early 2021. What we need now is to work more than ever towards the revitalization of the organization with a view to synthesizing for more effective results towards fighting maritime insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea Commission region. The president told participants that the summit will be the last he will be attending as head of state, but made a case for member states to remit their outstanding annual contributions to the Gulf of Guinea Commission Secretariat to assist the commission in fulfilling its mandate. President Nana Akufo Addo of the Republic of Ghana emerged the new chairman heads of state and government of the Gulf of Guinea region at the end of the summit. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. And that's Nationwide Today. We thank you for watching. But remember, you can always partner with us in our campaign against rape and rapists. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Good evening.